Y'all know nothing about this, you need to pay attention. Sit back and relax, it's time for Goodall's Country Kitchen. I'm out here in Henry County, outside Pleasureville, at the Farmstead Market. All right, this is going to be a one-of-a-kind review that I have not done before. This is a place that's actually owned and operated by an Amish family. I was just talking to the owner, Mr. Raber, in there. He was giving me the lowdown about all the goods that they make here, their own baked goods, peanut butter, uh, there's all kinds of things that they make here, which I'm going to show you later. But first and foremost, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. I'm closing in on 4 million views, and I have less than 1% of the people actually subscribing. Okay, I have a couple shout-outs before I get going. First is Bill North. He's from the Outer Banks around North Carolina. He shipped me uh, a T-shirt last week, a Coast Guard T-shirt. He's a Coast Guard veteran. Thank you for your service, Bill. Also, he purchased one of my t-shirts and then just a couple days ago sent me a $50 gift through YouTube. So I just want to tell you how much I really appreciate you supporting my efforts. Another shout out. I got a message from one of the followers who I believe was trying to audition for Hater of the Week. Jeff at Gorby's Grill writes, Who taught you how to eat? Prisoners or hyenas? Love that you show local places, but watching your channel and you eating like an animal is revolting. My dog has better table manners. But I take it as a badge of honor, and when I saw your comment, it almost brought tears to my eyes because I know how proud you made my mom and my dad. Oh! Here's a triple. All right. <laughs> so, with all that said, stick around for the end of the video because I've got announcements, I've got information on Ryan's new YouTube channel, merch, and upcoming videos that are going to be coming out next week. Okay, I have placed my order. As you see here, you come up to the counter and they got a menu board. They have Amish meats, cheeses. They don't actually make the meats here, uh, but some of them are Amish brands. Uh, of course, they make all their bakery goods here, desserts, and they have those apple pies, fried apple pies, which I'm gonna be showing you, cakes, this is going to be frustrating because I can see now I want it all. There's your homemade peanut butter I was telling you that they make here. They make roasted pepper cream cheese dip, which I heard is phenomenal. And they have a grocery here where you can get other things. There's all your pickles, different kind of pickled items. And they just have a lot of regular groceries and things too. So I'm sure people here that live in the community come here and do their grocery shopping instead of having to drive 10 or 20 miles into the big towns. Look at here, I'm, they have like ground flour and cornmeal. If you wanna cook from scratch without any of the byproducts in your cornmeal and flour, you can get all that here. Homemade packaged nuts and different spices. Tons of spices. I'm not sure what all that is. Uh, I think it's some kind of holistic type medicines. Pretty cool. 
And a lot of good organic type things here that they package themselves. All right, I can tell right now I'm going to be getting some cold milk to go with some of these desserts I'm going to be getting and probably going to be getting some of that cream cheese dip to take home too. Okay, I just tried out that roasted pepper dip. Looks like pimento cheese, but it's nothing like pimento cheese. And then there's the cream cheese spread, both of which are absolutely phenomenal. You can get some cookies. And this is all free samples, by the way. You can get their uh, cookies and spread on some of that pumpkin butter. Also, they carry pin country hams. If you want to buy a whole one and cook it yourself, you can, or they actually can cook it too. And then there's some already sliced country ham you can take home with you, different kind of cuts. I am looking forward to getting into some of this homemade fresh sourdough bread made on site. All right, before I sit down and eat my food, I want to show you out here on their porch. They have furniture for sale out here, uh, wind chimes, different things, bird houses. They sell different styles of clocks. They also sell dog houses, deer stands, a uh, nice gazebo you can sit out there and eat underneath, but I'm going to sit up here on the porch. This place is just really quaint and cozy. And this is actually the owner's farm next door here too. Looks like they raise their own honey. And I see, I heard chickens and cackling back there. So they got their farm fresh eggs. And then of course they live next door. So everything's done and made, raised here. Looks like I'm going to have some company today while I'm eating my lunch. I'm going to start with the homemade bean soup. It's got country ham in it. See, it's got at least two different kinds of beans in there. Huge chunks of that Penn's country ham. Homemade cornbread. Mmm. Just the way I like it. Not too sweet. Now it comes with onion. If you want it, they'll dice you up some fresh onion. I'm going to go ahead and taste it before I do my thing. Mmm. Wow, that is so good. All right, but y'all know how I do it. Brought my grace, saved by grace. And look at my little friend here. Poor little thing. Here, come here. With some of this country ham. Oh, good boy. Mm. This doesn't need any salt or pepper. Now, I did accentuate it with some of the grace and the onion. You can't eat soup. It looks like it's got, uh, without the grace, it looks like it's got pinto or navy bean and northern white bean, it looks like. I could be wrong. Mm. Now let me show you what else I like to do. Cornbread is so tasty. Reminds me, my grandma Irene, 
used to cook up that yellow cornbread in the skillet. Mmm. So good. They didn't have Diet Pepsi or Diet Coke. They had regular Coke and Pepsi, but I said, where's your diet drinks? So they got these brands of diet up on the top shelf, different flavors that I'd never seen before, but this is their root beer. So cold. You see how cold that is? You need asbestos mittens just to hold it. Mm. Here you go. I know some of your haters out there are going to say, Ew, he's letting the dog eat out of his hand. I'm a dog lover. Dog can eat off my plate anytime. Which brings me back to that guy uh, that tried to play hate I showed y'all earlier. He said that uh, I ate like I was a prisoner or a hyena. Don't get it twisted. I ate like a snapping turtle and laughed like a hyena. Mm. Look there. They even put my name on my sandwich. I got two kinds of sandwiches. I'm going to start off with, oh my, this thing, this thing weighs a ton. I told him to put some of that uh, green, no, go on, sit down, sit, sit, sit down. I told him to give me some of that green onion cheese on there and run it through the garden. Look at all that bologna on there. Go on, sit down. Sit down. Good boy. All right, here we go. Oh, and the sour, the homemade sourdough bread. Mm. This poor dog. Oh, he's fine. Is it a he or a she? Is it a he or a she? Uh, I'm not sure, but he will jump up there and grab the food. Oh, he's already been up here. I'm, I'm, I'm letting him eat with me. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. I've already run into three people since I've been out here. Didn't know I was going to be here. But they uh, follow my YouTube channel. It's awesome. You'd think out here in the country, you wouldn't run into people that know you, but I guess I must be doing something right. Anyway, lettuce, onion, tomato, pickle, mayonnaise, and that bologna has like a slight sweet taste to it. And they got a bunch of slices on there, sliced thin. Mm. By the way, I got their garlic bologna. It's kind of got a, a sweetness to it, plus a little accentuation of garlic going on there. Wash it down with some of this diet root beer. Ah, mm. This is a real good treat for me because, as you all know, I've been doing fish fry reviews. I think I've done nine fish fries in the last two weeks. I'm almost fished out. Not now, a word from my sponsor. Welcome to Billy Bob's Barbecue and Amish Deli.
a little country store with a whole lot to offer. So let's go in and see what they got. They've got homemade Amish jellies, pickles, jams, and honey and sorghum. They've got local Amish made lunch meats and cheeses. And don't forget the award winning Kansas City Gourmet Barbecue. Y'all don't know nothing about this Amish liver cheese and homemade sourdough bread. And don't forget about the homemade Amish fried apple pie. Just a 30 minute drive outside Louisville. It's veteran owned, and y'all don't know nothing about this Billy Bob's Barbecue and Amish Deli. Anyway, this is a nice change of pace for me. All right, I saved one more bite for my dog here. Go ahead, go ahead. Up, go ahead. Good boy. So as you see, made short work of that bean soup and bologna sandwich. Just sweep that off from my buddy here. Moving on, I'm telling you, these sandwiches weigh a ton. If you're wondering about getting your money's worth, this country ham, by the way, and I didn't look at my receipt. I'm going to have to check that out after I get done here. But I can tell you right now, the bean soup, the two sandwiches, and the drink uh, were 20. So easily could have had three people eat all this stuff. But I'm not done after this because i got to go in there and get some of those desserts. All right. Sliced baked country ham on the sourdough bread. Run through the garden with mayo. All right. Mm. Mm. Incredible. That mayonnaise blends with the saltiness of the country ham. Just blends together perfect. And of course the lettuce and tomato. I like the way they have this thing layered. Look how they layer the meat and the cheese in there together. But, yeah, when I'm done with this, I got to go in and get some desserts. There's no way I'm leaving out of here without getting some of those homemade desserts. Mm. Folks, it just don't get no better than this. Plus, I took the back roads on the way out here. Came through Shelbyville, US 60. Cut out uh, toward Eminence from Shelbyville and then and cut over to uh, Pleasureville. That bread is incredible. That sourdough bread, just soft and fresh and tasty. Look at these clocks. Isn't that something? By the way, they do clock repair here. If you have a grandfather clock needs fixing, they have a shop out back where they do all that. They sell birdhouses. Look at, listen to the music on these. Ain't nothing better than some homemade biscuits with some sorghum and butter. All right. Oh, here's the homemade soap. Yeah. Yep, my mom used to make homemade soap. It's really good. 
and it smells good too. Love the quaintness. You look up here, they got all these little old knickknacks, antiques. Old butter churn jugs, old bottles. First thing I'm going to start in is this coconut cake cream cheese buttercream icing. And this thing weighs a ton, so I know it's going to be rich. Of course, I'm not going to eat this whole thing. I ain't fronting. I ain't trying to act like I'm about ready to kill this whole pie. Wow, look how it holds together pretty good. Look at that. Mm. Get the rest of that. There we go. Mm. Just tasting the icing. All right, here's some kind of fancy schmancy milk. I asked him if it was... Uh, Pasteurized, uh, it's temperature pasteurized, not homogenized. So shake well, man. I hope this doesn't taste like that fresh milk milk I used to get down at my aunt Gladys's in Butler County. I remember when I went down there to visit and I tried to eat some cereal, and Aunt Gladys would put the milk on my cereal and I'd taste it, and it was that like freshly out of the cow. I'd just start crying. But people that live in the country raised on that, they say that there ain't nothing better than fresh out of the cow milk. Oh no, that's good. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. You know what's funny is I don't even really prefer coconut. I'm like a big chocolate, vanilla flavor type guy, banana cream. This is wonderful. Look at all the coconut shavings on top. And then you see that, that cream. Mm. I just apologized to one of the regulars in there because I told him that his nice, quaint, quiet little country store is probably about ready to get a lot busier. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. <laughs> She's a good old dog. All right. Well. Everything good? Everything's wonderful. Good. I'm going to try your apple pie. Sure. Ooh, this is uh, one of the owners, uh, Reuben, back here asking how everything was. He already knew. It's all good. No need to even ask. It's all fantastic. Mmm. 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 Now, I'm going to warn you, I don't think... I think they make their apple pies Monday through Wednesday. So if you want some of this good homemade Amish pie, and this is apple, by the way. Look at all that filling. Fresh. It's got that frosted coating on there. Oh, I'm going to be coming back here a lot. Mmm. That cold milk just sets it off perfect. Come here. Come here. That apple pie is so good, the dog even likes it. Dogs generally don't eat sweets. 
I want to show you some more things around here that uh, they're homemade stuff. And then we're going to wrap things up and stick around for the announcements. Also walking out here, they have a, a separate business out here with the clocks. They sell clocks and repair. I'll just come out here and stick my head in. Just wanted to stick my head in and get a video of your clock shop, if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. No, this looks great. <laughs> and look at there, I got wood burning stove. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Stroke of luck. I told you that I've ran into several of the supporters of my channel that I just coincidentally ran into. Well, this David Schofield, he and his wife, Judy, are the ones that reached out to me, messaged me, and told me about this place. We have here one of Kentucky's best hidden secrets. And like I told a regular in there, it's not going to be hidden for long, unfortunately. <laughs> but he is friends with the owners here. He actually does a little work for them because, as you know, Amish, they can't drive cars and things like that. So he drives for them. Can you tell us a little bit uh, in a nutshell about this place? Well, uh, it, it, it's like you say, it's a hidden place here that, that people don't know about. And we just happened on to it. Because the guy at the bank said, oh, you ought to go such and such. That was seven years ago. And first time we come, we didn't come far enough and turned around and went back. Second time, we got out here and we've been happy. We come all the time uh, because they're just great people. They got products that you don't normally find somewhere else. Right. And uh, so we just love it. We got grandfather clock repair out here. They got... Just all kinds of things that you're just not going to run into just anywhere. And they're interesting, nice family people. They really are. Oh, yeah. And you know, another thing, side note, when I was in there, they speak German. Yeah. Did you know? They were yeah. like when they were uh, making the food and stuff, they were speaking German to each other. And then yeah. when they were talking to me, perfect English. So yeah. that's pretty cool oh, how yeah. they're bilingual like that, speaking that uh, Pennsylvania Dutch or something like that. But. Right. Yeah, they do. Yeah. When I, uh, when I'm with them at times, they'll, they'll be saying, uh, things in Pennsylvania Dutch, but every once in a while they'll say an English word that I, Oh, that's an English word. Well, I ask them, how come you say that English word? They said, well, Pennsylvania Dutch doesn't have a word for that. So we have to use English. So. <laughs> okay. And speaking of Dutch, uh, this land out here, was originally purchased from members of the Low Dutch Settlement in Louisville when they had the stations back in the 1780s when George Rogers Clark established stations along Beargrass Creek. There was one by Baptist East Hospital called Low Dutch Station. Well, those settlers actually purchased 10,000 acres from Squire Boone, who established what would later become Shelbyville. It was called Painted Stone. So all this area out here was coincidentally settled by the Dutch. And it was called the Low Dutch Settlement. And it's coincidence because the Amish speak uh, German, Dutch, Pennsylvania Dutch. But it's just a coincidence because they're not originally from here. But right. yeah. ended up settling on Dutch settled property. Yeah, they uh, these people came, most of them come from Holmes County, uh, Ohio. They've been out here, I think, eight or 10 years, something like that. Yeah, he said they've been open here eight and a half, so I don't know when they originally came here. And that reminds me, on the way home, I'm going to try and find this old Dutch meeting house that uh, Mr. Raber was telling me about that's been here since probably before 1800. I'm going to try and find oh. that. Oh. All right. Well, I appreciate all the information, yeah. and I really appreciate yeah. you guiding me out of here because sure. this is, like I said, one of Kentucky's best hidden gems right here. Yeah. Where else in Louisville? Can you go find somewhere to eat and have to park and pull up next to a horse and buggy? You ain't going to find that anywhere around town. All right. I could sit here all day and tell you about how great everything was here. But you just have to come out here and try it for yourself. And I promise you, you're going to thank me later. All right. So, announcements. Uh, this coming weekend actually is going to be the last installment 
of my uh, fish fry series. I'm going to be going to two different parish uh, fish fries, one of which is very sentimental to me. I've been holding it off for last six because I have a lot of fond memories of there growing up when I was a kid. I'm not going to tell you the name yet. You'll have to watch the video, but I've got great stories. All right, the next thing is, as you all know, most of you, Ryan started his own YouTube channel. It's called Keep It Cool With Sheets. If you haven't looked that up and subscribed, make sure you do so. Merch. If you're wanting a Goodall's Country Kitchen t-shirt, email me at barrygoodall1966 at gmail.com. The shirts are 25. Off the top of my head, if memory serves me correct, this is the meeting house of the Dutch settlers that migrated from low Dutch settlement in Louisville on Beargrass Creek out here to Shelby and Henry County. And this is their meeting house where they would have town meetings, probably had church services here. Okay, the gentleman that allowed me to come in here did confirm these are the same Dutch settlers that migrated from Low Dutch Station in Louisville. This is where we sell our wool from our sheep. Oh, okay. This is my wife when she does all the spinning and knitting. This is all the everything from our sheep. So you do it on like old school style on a spinning wheel. I've got one of those at my house. Oh yeah, look here. You don't see that too often. Old school spinning wheel. Okay, so if you're ever over by Baptist East Hospital, there's a park behind there called Brown Park, and it's got historical signs about Low Dutch Station. If you ever wonder whatever happened to the settlers at that Low Dutch Station, this is where they resettled out to. All this 7,000 acres around here, as far as you can see, and the descendants of the Low Dutch still live on these farms today. So there you have it. I'm glad I stopped here so I could connect the pieces to that puzzle. watching my food review and you've come this far then you're probably interested in some of the history I was touching on uh, the Dutch settlement in and around Pleasureville. This is actually the site of Low Dutch Station which was established in 1780 after Heinrich Vanta brought a group of Dutch immigrants from Pennsylvania down the Ohio River on flat boats around the same time that George Rogers Clark was bringing people into the Louisville area. This is in the middle of what was to become a string of fortified settlements called stations along Beargrass Creek. You had Floyd Station, which was owned by James Floyd, literally two blocks that way. You had Sturgis Station, Lynn Station further east. You had Spring Station, which is just another quarter mile from here. Several stations, and they were all within earshot of each other because at that time, the American Revolution was still in full pitch and the local Native American tribes were being supported and backed by the British government. They were allies fighting against the Americans together. You had a British agent, Captain Thomas McKee, who was organizing local Indian tribes and they were constantly ambushing, massacring, and attacking all of the fortified stations in this area. The Dutch decided that they needed to get to safer ground, so at that time they purchased 10,000 acres from Squire Boone, who owned a lot of property in what would become Shelby County. He sold him 10,000 acres out into what is now the Pleasureville area, around the Shelby and Henry County line. A lot of the people that have the Dutch ancestry that live out there to this day, this is actually where your Dutch ancestry came to Kentucky. Okay, we're here at the Brown Park. 
which was donated by the Brown and Graham families. A very prominent and charitable family here in the Louisville area. You've heard of Brown Foreman. You've heard of J. Graham Brown Cancer Center. That's all the Browns. Anyway, I'm going to show you a little bit around the park and uh, give a little bit more information. This gives a little history of the Brown Park from the time that the Browns uh, had possession of it, but this is a picture right here of what remained of Low Dutch Station in uh, the mid 1800s. You can see in the background the the main mansion house, which I'm about ready to go find right now. You know it's. It's hard to imagine something so picturesque and serene as a setting here at Brown Park could just 240 years ago be the scene of bloody battles being taken place, you know, during the American Revolution. I'm sure there are numerous unmarked graves in this location of some of the low Dutch settlers that fell victim to the Native American attacks that were taking place during that time. Years after the Low Dutch left this area, the Brown family purchased just about all the, the land, which has now become St. Matthew's. The original mansion house is located 200 yards in that direction. But the Brown family was gracious to donate this property. And it's just hard to imagine that this was the scene of so much conflict. The Low Dutch ended up in Henry County. Their descendants still live there today. And I just wanted to give a little history to put the pieces of the puzzle together and show people where everything started, right here at Low Dutch Station. back out to Henry County in Pleasureville at the Farmstead Market. You're a good boy, aren't you? And y'all don't know nothing about the Farmstead Market. Now you know the facts of why I'm on a mission. You're always welcome back to Goodall's Country Kitchen.